expect. Well, in every case, when you get uh, 50 or more points, Jim, you can rest assured that much of it was contributed by the opposition making mistakes. Uh, that happened to Illinois by dropping a snap from center on a punt, having a punt blocked, uh, interceptions, fumbles. Uh, when they turn the ball over a lot, there's always the chance that you're going to run You didn't expect score. that, though, from them, did you? You thought probably this well, could be I thought it would be one. a pretty close game. Their defense had been playing well, and offensively, you're always worried about a team that's capable of throwing the ball like they are. They must have surprised you early the way they ran the ball because they are known as a short passing team, possession passing team. Jim, that was their strategy. They switched uh, Keith Jones, the big tail, uh, fullback to tailback, and put Markland in there as about 240-pound fullback. Both of them are excellent backs. I was particularly impressed with Jones. Uh, I think he's got tremendous ability. This is Markman here, the great big fullback hitting up in there. Uh, that's unlike Illinois. You go to two tight ends and run. Here they are again. Two tight end formation. This time they roll out and hit a pass into the flat. Uh, but um, uh, that was their new uh, strategy coming in. But uh, unfortunately, once we got up by two touchdowns, you know, that kind of goes out the window. Here's a long field goal by... Uh, Illinois that gets them on the scoreboard first, and they lead three to nothing. And talking about keeping it on the ground, that was your strategy also, it appears. Well, uh, yes, we felt we could run on them. Actually, uh, we felt the strength of their defense was their secondary, because they're used to playing against a lot of pass offenses. Uh, however, we threw the ball very effectively. Not a lot, but very effectively. Here's an outcut uh, to Greg McMurtry for a first down. He makes a very fine catch with a defensive back over his shoulder. Um, your give, Jim gives to the fullback on the option series uh, for a good uh, game. We come up with a critical third and nine situation on this drive, and Jim does a great job getting the ball to Higgins for a first down. That's the way you want to throw. You don't necessarily want to throw it a lot, but you want to make each pass count. Well, I want to throw more than we threw in this game, but uh, really, uh, the way it went, the turnovers were so great that we got the ball with great field position. Jim runs in on the option play, standing up to give us a 7-3 lead here, Jim. But we, we felt uh, we wanted to establish the run first. We were going to use some the short passing game. But uh, actually, they gave us a little bit more than we anticipated. This is the shovel pass. I hate to see this shovel go on. <laughs> Tried to run it myself. Have never been successful. And everybody runs it against me. Here's two tight ends again. And we had a missed defense. We had a linebacker blitz when he shouldn't have. Left a gaping hole in the defense. And they uh, got a big play. Third down, another missed assignment here on defense. Uh, we didn't contain the quarterback on the rollout. They ran in for a touchdown. Now, there are two very critical uh, missed assignments there that we cannot afford in a close ball game. And you say you're asking about that there, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> here's a, a here's play. drop the snap from center, and we get the ball at the 10-yard line. Unfortunately, we come up a yard short of the first down uh, right at the goal line, and uh, we have to go for the field goal. Uh, felt we ought to... Um, uh, get on the board here with the field goal to tie the score. But the score 10-10 and them stopping you, at this point you had to be wondering about what was happening. No. I felt we could move the football on this team. I'm waiting for our defense to tighten up, which they did there, and stop the shovel pass, What Jim. was the adjustment that was made? After their first two series, they didn't do anything. Uh, we were always worried about them rolling out on us, and we had to get that out of our system and start stopping the run. Here, Jim comes on a post cut and a great catch by McMurtry. Uh, the big play in that drive was, of course, that post cut, which got us down in the scoring position. A lot of option against them. Right. Fourth and one, give to the fullback who goes down to the goal line, uh, Bob Perriman, and then uh, Bob goes up over top for the touchdown. Did you know that the option wouldn't work against this yes. team? Yes, we did. We felt we'd be able to option them. And, you know, it's a matter of how much you want to use it. You don't want to, you know, we're not a completely wishbone team. We just go in and out of it use it when we, you know, think it'll be effective for us. And how did you know that the long ball was going to be there? Well, we got, you know, we, we used some counter action here and got the safety frozen again. So you're one-on-one -on -one and Paul runs by the corner and Jim puts the ball right on the money and we go up 24 to 10. And that's the way you want to pass, effectively, right? Well, right. I mean, if, you know, if it's there, take it. Here's a pass that ought to be intercepted. It was, it was hit just as he threw it. And uh, Garland Rivers picks it up off for us, and we're back in business. Uh, Jim comes right back here and gets McMurtry on you know, a crossing pattern. He's knocked out of bounds. We get stopped here and go for the field goal. And um, Mike Gillette kicks a long field goal here. 
to give us a 20 to 7 to 10 lead. Uh, 52 yarder to be exact. At that point, there wasn't much time left in the half, but Illinois does get a chance. Yes, to we, come get back. A, we get a face mask penalty, a 15 yard face mask penalty that gives them an opportunity to kick a field goal. This upset me no end <laughs> um, because I didn't want them to get on the board uh, by the half, but we go in at halftime leading by 14 points, Jim. At 27-13 and a half, that field goal at the time, that was big because that kind of kept them in the game. Were gave you? them a little, you know, gave them a little confidence. And they had played a pretty good first half, except, in my opinion, the drop snap from center on the punt and the two post cuts by our offense. Otherwise, they're right in the game. The second half explosion is still to come. Stay with us as Michigan Replay continues. I got man coverage on the wide side of the field, and the free safety sat down, and we scored, obviously. I was excited because it's been a long haul for me because I got hurt earlier in the season, and I'm just now starting to get back into the swing of things. So for that reason, I was uh, exceptionally happy. Right, right up the middle, Coach Eggs, our special teams um, coach, Ended up in the hospital this week with heart surgery. Heart surgery, and um, you know he had worked so hard on this game, um, telling us how to how to go after their punt, and we really wanted to get one. So it, you know made it extra special that we did get one today. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, Dieter Heron talking about Alex Agassi. We'd like to wish Alex uh, all the best in the world. Also coming back from surgery that he had this week, and I know. He's one of your good buddies, cigar smoking well, yeah, buddies. I, I stopped in to see him just before we came down here to do the show. Told him about Dieter's flock kick, and uh, he had set that up. Said we're going to get one, and sure enough, Dieter got it. Well, that was the play that really got the team going in the second half, because down by 14, Illinois was still in it, and you didn't do anything with your first offensive That's right. possession. First, first possession, we didn't do anything, and then uh, they uh, took the ball and got it out to about the 35 before they were forced to punt. Dieter Heron comes up and blocks the kick. I, that's a touchdown to me, Jim, but they put the ball on the one-yard line. So that meant you just had to get the offense back out right. there. It to took you a couple offense. plays to get in. Right. And the uh, first play, we didn't make it, and then we went to the option. Jim went in and scored. Jim's getting an opportunity a lot on that option because they're so concerned with the fullback, aren't they? Well, you have to stop the fullback first. Pitch is always dangerous. Probably the one guy they want to keep with the ball is the quarterback. Here they come over the middle. This is Andy Moeller with a great interception. I think that's great uh, linebacker pass defense when you can get on a receiver like that and then cut in front of him and pick it off. That was a great play. We come back and run a little off tackle play here. Jamie gets good yardage. Um, but, uh, you know, we got field position again, Jim, and which really helps. This is a reverse. Uh, Jim pitches the ball to McMurtry comes around inside the 25-yard line for a first down. Out of the wishbone, that's a good play because they're looking at option down the line. Right. They're flowing pretty well, and so that play helped us. <clears throat> Here again, this time he gives us the fullback. Bob perriman has been running real hard for about the last three games, Jim. He gets a lot of yardage, and he's tough to handle. And that's why you've got to be concerned about the fullback first. Well, if you let him run like that, he's going to get a lot of yardage and score a lot of points. Big play here, third, third and 11. 11. When we get the ball back, and Jim goes down here to Jokish on the corner, and he gets down inside the 15 yard line for a big play. That was third and long and uh, a necessary play. Thomas Wilshire runs off tackle for the touchdown, and uh, now the game is uh, pretty much uh, under control. And uh, that was uh, just before the third period. Now, uh, here's one a fake punt <laughs> or what? Tell us. Well, it's a play. And, uh, <laughs> And Monty comes out, he's a good athlete, made a nice run there and picked up the first down. Because that guy on the corner was getting close to blocking kicks. Well, that might be true, Jim. <laughs> you, gotta, you run a risk when you do that. Uh, here's a great throw by Jim. Wonderful catch by uh, Higgins for a first down. And, uh, we're on the move again here. You changed, uh, you changed quarterbacks here early right. in the fourth uh, quarter. I took Jim out, figured he had enough now. And, uh, Chris Zerbrug in here throws uh, back over on a throwback pass to Gerald White, and that gets us down into a scoring position again. On a third down and goal, run the option play, and this time Zerbrug goes in for the touchdown. And again, you're at the point where you've got a lot of people, you're keeping the ball on the ground and giving some kids a lot of work that haven't gotten Well, work. a lot of kids got to play that haven't played for a long time, and particularly on the offense. And we're not throwing any passes or anything, but we are moving the ball pretty well. This is J.J. Grant on a blitz. 
uh, causes a fumble, and here we are, 23-yard line again. And you're back to that. The other team really helps There's in a blowout like this. There's only one way you're going to score. Michigan's offense cannot score 69 points. The other team has to help you a lot, and they did. And that's what happened to them. Thomas Wilcher down inside the mm -hmm. one, and again you go to the wishbone. Right. Uh, Serpark again on the option goes in for the uh, score, and the score is uh, score goes to 69 to 13. They don't have on here Michael Taylor. Uh, very fine uh, redshirt freshman quarterback, uh, engineered a drive for a touchdown and took the ball in himself. Now it's time for the Budweiser play of the game. Well, we're leading by two touchdowns. It's early in the third period. Uh, you want to break the game open. Nobody's moved the ball very well. They're forced to punt. Dieter Heron blocks the kick. We go in and get a touchdown. That puts us three touchdowns up. Really, Jim, that play cost him any chance or any hope of coming back in the second half and winning the game. So the special teams make a good uh, good play to get things going in the second half. The offense plays well. The defense makes adjustments. You've got to be real pleased, I think, with the outcome of this well, one. Well, particularly since it's kind of makeshift defense. We lost Billy Harris on the first play of the game. Uh, we played without Dave Folkert's tackle. We had some other guys that were banged up. We've got a lot of guys that are banged up. And, of course, the, the real sad thing of this game is we lost Johnny Colasar for the rest of the uh, season uh, with a broken collarbone. And you take a player of that caliber out of a football team, it's definitely going to hurt us, and we'll miss him. And I feel bad for him because uh, he's having a great year, and we needed him. Getting back and away from the first team and the guys that, you know, scored all the points stuff, you got better performances from your depth players. And down the line, just by what you've said about the injuries you've had, that's got to help. Well, it's got to help, and, uh, and we needed that, um, particularly offensively. We never had too much of an opportunity to play our second, third team offensive guys because we were playing defensive guys and they weren't holding them. <laughs> well, this time they held them and played pretty well and caused some turnovers themselves, which gave quite a few offensive players a chance to play. I know your answer, but, you, but where are you? Are you where you want to be at this point? Well, I'm very much concerned about the health of our ball club. Uh, Attitude-wise, uh, you know, we've got the ability to move the ball and score. Uh, we're, we're forcing some... Um, uh, mistakes by the opponents with our defense. Um, we're in pretty good shape, Jim, and uh, the way it looks right now, if we can keep winning, it's going to come down to the big one <laughs> once again. 8 0 is pretty good shape at this point in the season. <laughs> Coming up, Jim Harbaugh enters a new dimension. Don't go away when Michigan Replay continues. A pass is called. Harbaugh takes the snap and drops back. The blitz is on. The protection begins to break down. Harbaugh now enters a new dimension. A dimension not of sight or sound, but of mind. A dimension where the boundaries are imagination. The seven-yard drop has taken Harbaugh off the football field and into the danger zone. It frightens you a little bit when you look across the line of scrimmage and see guys frothing at the mouth and, and know that they just want to take your head off, but uh, a little bit, I guess. And that's what helps you get around back there, huh? <laughs> yeah, trying to avoid uh, injury or getting uh, your life taken away, I guess. I know, uh, especially when I was younger, I used to give uh, Coach Jim Beckham some great hands, I'm sure. But uh, I don't know, you must be just getting used to it or something, because him and Coach Hamlin both, they say, well, just go ahead, do what you do best. You scramble around, find an open guy, so uh, I guess they're getting used to You know, you just go back and, and somebody's not open. You, you, it's a decision you have to make in a split second. You know, you have to, um, you know, add it up. What are the chances for success? Can I get this ball in there or can I? And if, you know, if the answer is no, then you gotta you got to find something else. you got to scramble or, like I said, take the sack and throw it away. But it's all got to be done in an instant. And uh, I don't know. I guess I'm just practice at it.
One guy who doesn't like Jim Harbaugh scrambling around a lot is his coach, although he's effective at it, isn't he? Well, a quarterback has to be able to move around and, uh, and convert the broken play, or he's not a good quarterback. Uh, because you can't just have everybody blocked and everything run just exactly the way you want. There are some times when I, I think maybe they scramble a little early. Jim's <laughs> done that a couple of times. Actually, during the eight games, I can really think of only three occasions where I don't think that he should have broken out. One of them, of course, last week against Indiana, we had a first down on the five, and we ended up with a 20-yard uh -huh. loss plus a grounding penalty. Uh, but... Basically, those big plays have been helpful to us. Real quickly, what did you think of my Rod Serling impression? You're outstanding, Jim. <laughs> You're almost... <laughs>